Hello friend, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky and we are gonna be making five pies today. These are all pies that would go really well on your Thanksgiving table. But each one of them has a little bit of a twist to it. So I'm gonna wash up three sweet potatoes. Not one of these pies is a traditional pie that you would think of for the holidays, which I'm really excited to try them all. Two of them are gonna be refrigerator pies and two and three of them are gonna be baked pies. So the first one that I'm going to get started with, it's not gonna be the first one we're gonna finish baking, but we need to get some sweet potatoes cooking for a browned butter sweet potato pie. So I think I'm gonna cook these on high for 25 minutes. I'm gonna make sure it's closed. And now let's get going on two of the refrigerator pies. And we do need to bake the crust for both of those pies. So I'm gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I can link all these pie recipes down below for you if you wanna try making them yourself. The next thing we need to do is make the pie crust for the two refrigerator pies. And I need to melt three tablespoons of butter for each one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those melted at the same time. My butter is melted. I also grabbed two pie crust while I was at it. The two refrigerator pie recipes we're gonna be making, the first one we're gonna be making is called a French silk pie. So it's gonna have an Oreo crust. We need 20 Oreos in here. Two, four, six, eight, 16, 17, 18, 20. Along with our three tablespoons of butter. And that's all that it calls for for the French silk pie for the crust. So we're gonna get this into our pie tin and kind of press it toward the sides. So I'm gonna work with this measuring spoon to evenly distribute these Oreo crumbs with the butter. And then I'll go in with my hands. As I was watching that back, I realized I put way more Oreos than I needed in this. And apparently this crust is super forgiving because this turns out perfect even with quite a few extra Oreos in the pie crust. So here's our crust for our silk pie, but now we are gonna make a crust for our peanut butter pie. That's the next refrigerator pie that we are making. And I could not find what the crust called for for this recipe at the store this morning. The recipe for this calls for chocolate graham crackers. I couldn't find chocolate wafers at the store. I couldn't find chocolate graham crackers. I couldn't find Oreos without the filling. So I thought a good substitute would be just to buy a family pack of Oreos, knowing I needed it for this silk pie. And then I would just take a second and remove the Oreo filling from the Oreos itself. This might seem barbaric to some of you, but I think that this is the best way we can kind of substitute that chocolate graham cracker flavor. As I was driving home from the store, I thought, you know what I could have done probably is bought regular graham crackers and then just added maybe two tablespoons of cocoa powder to it. But I didn't think about that until I was already home. So I'm just gonna take a minute and I think I'm gonna do 30 cookies. Well, no, maybe I'll do, yeah, 30 cookies because I'm gonna be re removing some of the volume from the cookies. And we did 20 for this pie. So 30 without the filling should be a good substitute. And then I'm gonna follow the same directions that say we need, oh see, mm, I don't think I'm gonna add the brown sugar because the recipe says to add some brown sugar but I think these chocolate cookies are going to be sweeter than chocolate graham crackers. Mm. 
I did just go microwave a few more tablespoons of butter because this recipe calls for seven tablespoons of butter. And because it doesn't have the filling to help bind it, it's gonna need a little bit more butter than just the three tablespoons that we used for the last recipe. So we're gonna get our crust or our pie pan here. We're gonna get this blended up and then we can bake both of these in the oven at the same time. I'm gonna have to remember which one's which. This one is for the peanut butter pie and this one is for the silky pie, the French silk pie. The one for the peanut butter pie is a little bit darker because it has more butter in it. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm just gonna work on getting this crust evenly distributed throughout and then I'm gonna push it in. I know probably to some of you to take the filling out of an Oreo is just gut-wrenching. I have never liked frosting my entire life and so growing up, me and my friend were the perfect match because I would always scrape out the center of the Oreo, give it to her, she would have basically double stuff. Oreos, I think before that was even a thing, I could eat the chocolate cookie part and she could have extra frosting. So we were a good pair. So this needs to bake for 10 minutes. While this is baking, we can roll out our pie crust for our other three pies. The next three pies are gonna have a traditional pastry pie crust. And this morning I already went ahead and made up the crust. I can link this recipe down below. This is an all butter pastry crust. And I'm gonna grab all three of them because we need all three of these. Plus we need three baking dishes. One of them needs to be blind baked, which means we need to bake it before we fill it. The other two, once we have them rolled out, we can just fill them with the pie ingredients. And I should tell you what the other three pies we're making. I've already told you the brown butter sweet potato pie. I've never made sweet potato pie, but it sounds delicious, especially with the brown butter aspect to it. And then we're gonna make a German chocolate pie. And then we're gonna make an apple butter pumpkin pie with a streusel topping. This is the apple butter we made together this year. All three of these recipes have their own pastry recipe that goes along with it. And they all say you can use a store-bought crust if you want. So I figured I would just go ahead and use my recipe, make three of them up. I actually made four ones in the freezer so that next time I need a pie pastry, I've got it in my freezer and I can just pull it out of the freezer. So I'm just gonna take a second and I'm going to roll out these three crusts. They're nice and cold. When you're working with pastry, you want it to stay as cold as possible so that the butter doesn't melt in the oven. You get nice flakes. And one thing that helps with the crust not sticking is to keep turning it. These three pies don't have top crust, they only have bottom crust. So we only have to roll out three pie cr crusts. Now that I have this one pie crust rolled out, I'm gonna pop this in the fridge because we're not ready to bake it. 
and I wanna keep that pastry as cold as possible. I'm gonna probably blind bake the last one just because I need to get that oven to a hotter temperature before I can blind bake it. For the holidays, pies are one of the awesome things that you can make ahead. For sure, you can make the crust ahead and get this in your freezer. You can make all sorts of pies, pumpkin pie, blueberry pie, apple pie, and you can, some of them you actually make like custard pies, pumpkin pie, sweet potato pie, things like that. You make them, you bake them, and then you freeze them. Things like apple pie, blueberry pie, more like a fruit pie, those ones, you can make them all the way up. You can make the crust, make them all the way up, but put them in the freezer before you bake them. And that way you can have a few things checked off your list that you need to do if you wanna have a homemade pie on your family's holiday table without having to cook it or make it right before the event. And I'm just having fun today experimenting with some new pies <laughs> that one I had never heard of until I was researching unique pie recipes last night. And so this is just for fun. That's my timer for these crusts so we can get these out of the oven. I think I'm gonna bake that one. This is the one without the filling. I think I'm gonna bake that for another two minutes. But this one for our French silk pie is done. I'm gonna set that there just to cool. Got some cracking on this pastry, so I'm just kind of mending the seam. As soon as I get this one rolled out and the sides and the edges all crimped, I'm gonna pop this one in the refrigerator just like I did the last one. Both of my chocolate crusts are done. So now I'm gonna turn the heat off, oop, this one, and we are going to increase the heat to 400 degrees for blind baking the pie. That's our last one. Our oven has preheated to blind bake our pie crust. So I'm gonna put this one in the refrigerator. I'm gonna take out the one, ooh, the one that I did first because this one is the coldest. And whenever you're putting pastry into the oven, you want that butter to be as cold as possible. So now that this is, I can tell it's firmed up quite a bit, we can go ahead and blind bake it. So what I'm gonna do, Oh, you know what we need to do first? Now we're gonna put pie weights. We're gonna pop this in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. Our sweet potatoes are still going. Let's see how these feel. Those are almost to room temperature, so we can actually get going on those. Those need to be refrigerated, and so let's make the custard. I was trying to think, should we start making the filling and get the pies baking in the oven while we make the custard? What should I do next? Let me think about that while I clean up the pie crust mess because I don't need this out anymore because we did all the rolling out of the pies at the same time, which means we can clean this up and we don't have to work in a floury mess. Have you all seen that reel that's going around? It's probably a TikTok too, where between every step of being in the kitchen, someone goes and like washes their hands. Well, that is totally me. <laughs> I just don't always show it every time because it would be a lot, but after every step, I have to wash my hands. 
And I also like to kind of keep the kitchen clean too because I enjoy being in the kitchen when it's a little bit neater if possible. With cleaning the kitchen, it gave me some clarity. I've decided to make the peanut butter pie because this one is gonna come together so quickly. From start to finish, this pie is really, really easy. The first thing we need to do though, because we need to use the stand mixer to make whipped cream and to make the peanut butter filling and then we're gonna fold in the whipped cream. We're gonna make the whipped cream first in here. Because when you make whipped cream, you want your bowl to be clean. And so instead of having to clean it really well after we make the peanut butter filling, we're just gonna go ahead and make it in here. So we don't need to flavor this because we're gonna flavor the actual pie filling. So we're just gonna whip this until it's a firm peak. I put the towel on there just so it doesn't splatter all over the kitchen. And it only took a matter of about 45 seconds to a minute maybe to get our whipped cream whipped. So we're gonna take this and put it into this bowl. Cause we need our stand mixer now to go ahead and mix up the peanut butter portion of this. To our stand mixer, I'm gonna add cream cheese, creamy peanut butter, vanilla, and powdered sugar. I'm just going to put a towel back on this so that we don't get the powdered sugar everywhere. That actually wasn't too bad, too messy. I wanna scrape the sides of the bowl and then we'll whisk it one more time. And that was so easy. If you needed the fastest dessert, this could be one of them. You could even pre-buy the Oreo crust already made because you can buy those already made in the baking section and that would make you have to, or let you skip one step. I had the time today, so I figured I might as well go ahead and make it myself. And I needed Oreos for the next recipe. But we're just gonna get all this peanut butter mixture off the beater. And then we're gonna get all this peanut butter mixture out of our mixer. Get this into our whipped cream. And I'm gonna gently fold the peanut butter and the whipped cream together, trying to keep as much air into the whipped cream as possible. Once you have one homogeneous mass, then we can go ahead and get it into our pastry or our pie crust. The cool thing about this recipe is it can be frozen for up to a month at this point. The only thing that you need to do to finish this is to decorate the top. So if you needed a pie that you could do today and enjoy at Thanksgiving or even Christmas, go ahead and make yourself this up, throw it in the freezer and pull it out before. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the refrigerator. And then I went ahead and I did pull out the pastry that we blind baked. No! 
because it was done, I, al I almost forgot about it. I could smell it. <laughs> and so I pulled that out. This is not fully cooked. It smells incredible. You can smell the butter in it, but this is just about halfway cooked because the pie itself, which we're gonna make the brown butter sweet potato pie, does not bake long enough in the oven for the crust to get fully baked. And that's why we did go through this extra step of blind baking this pie. So I'm gonna go get this in the fridge. And then I think what we should do now is actually make some of the pies to go into the oven. So those can be in the oven while we make the custard for the silk pie. This next pie is gonna come together so quickly. We're gonna make a German chocolate pie. I actually made a German chocolate cake this weekend for my brother-in-law for his birthday for the first time, and that was super easy. I always felt super intimidated by the process, but this is going to be, this pie at least is gonna be really easy. It's gonna be even easier than actually making a German chocolate cake. But I was surprised that the German chocolate cake wasn't as hard as I was thinking it would be. Really, it's the frosting that's a little intimidating. So here we've got one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. We're gonna get these into a glass bowl so that we can pop this in the microwave and actually melt these chocolate chips. And then we need to add three tablespoons of butter to this. So that's one, two, three right there. So I'm gonna go microwave this until these are melted together. Our chocolate and butter are fully melted together. So now we're gonna add just the rest of the ingredients and this is going to be so easy. So I just added salt, vanilla, one can of sweetened and condensed milk, a 14 ounce can. And yes, this is a 14 ounce can. Three large eggs. three quarters cup of chopped pecans, and three quarters cup of coconut. Mix all that together. I'm gonna pull out one of our cold crusts from the refrigerator. This smells incredible. This pie has to bake for 35 to 40 minutes, which is a relatively short amount of time for a pie. I find that pies typically take about an hour, so we will set the timer for 35 minutes and then check it. This is a 350 degree oven. I did have to reduce the oven temperature after having the pastry in the oven. So now let's go ahead, let's see if our sweet potatoes are done and then we could make our brown butter sweet potato pie and they are done. So I'm gonna need to get tongs because these are piping hot. I think I'm gonna let these cool down while we make our apple butter pumpkin streusel pie. Here's our apple butter. I just got my bowl washed out so we can make this pie. This one's gonna come together really quickly too. We've got our pumpkin puree here, and that's one cup, and we need one cup of apple butter. Oh my goodness, this smells incredible. So we can just use the same measuring spoon. This recipe doesn't call for a ton of sugar because a lot of that sweetness is coming from the apple butter itself, so to that, we only need to add a quarter cup of brown sugar. And I'm happy to report that my brown sugar bear is keeping my brown sugar soft, which is nice. When I make regular pumpkin pie, I always like to use brown sugar instead of white sugar because I think it just adds a richer flavor. Now we're gonna add our eggs. One can of evaporated milk. You can substitute heavy cream for evaporated milk if you want. That's what I do when I make my regular pumpkin pie recipe, just my standard pumpkin pie that I like to make. Then I don't use evaporated milk. I use heavy cream and brown sugar. 
I can link that recipe down below if you're interested. But because this is the first time I'm making this recipe, I am following it to the T, kind of. Because I don't exactly know how much nutmeg I added. I love nutmeg, so I just added that much nutmeg and that much salt. And then we've got a couple more spices. We've got cinnamon here and ginger. This recipe only calls for a quarter teaspoon of ginger, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I probably put more like a half a teaspoon of nutmeg because I like nutmeg. And then a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm gonna add a little bit more cinnamon. It doesn't call probably for a ton of each of those because the apple butter is spiced already. So I should probably get a whisk out and whisk this together. And that's all the ingredients for this apple butter pumpkin pie. But we do need to make the streusel topping. This pie is supposed to bake at 375 and obviously we have that other oven at 350. So I'm gonna get this oven preheated to 375 if I can. Okay, it's preheating. And while I don't wanna pour my custard into my pie shell because I'm worried it would get soggy, so I'm just gonna set that aside and we can get going on our brown butter sweet potato pie while we're waiting for this oven to preheat. We only need to brown four tablespoons of butter, which is a half a stick or a quarter cup. So we're gonna get this in there. While that's browning, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out two cups of sweet potato. I think I cooked more sweet potato than I need. We'll just eat it. The recipe said it was probably three potatoes, which I think it was more like one and a half because these are, I guess, pretty big sweet potatoes. Maybe almost two sweet potatoes. That right there is two cups of sweet potato. This is not gonna take long to brown at all because this is such a small amount of butter. Our butter is browned and smells divine. Turn the stove off. This recipe calls for almost all the same ingredients as the last recipe, so it was kind of good order to do this in. And then to cool that butter off before we add eggs, I'm gonna go ahead and get our two cups of sweet potato in here. We need a half a cup of heavy cream. So this recipe calls for cream instead of evaporated milk, which makes sense because you can use either or. We're gonna do our three eggs. Now we're gonna add our salt. Ginger, cinnamon, and this recipe calls for something I have not used yet, some clove. And the last ingredient is some yogurt. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk this up. Now we have our two pie fillings here. I think our oven is just about ready. Oh, I think I forgot to add a little vanilla to this. Let's go ahead and do that now. I have our two crusts out. One of them is for the sweet potato pie, which is this one. And this is the one we par baked or blind baked. This one can go into this 350 degree oven. Consistency of this one is much runnier. This is what I think of a more standard pumpkin pie texture. This one, I'm gonna go into this oven, which is preheated to 375. Now we officially have four of our pies basically done and our fifth one is started. But the fifth one is, doesn't call for a lot of the same ingredients that I just used for the other four. So this is what my counter looks like. I'm gonna take a second and go ahead and get this clean. Once I have this clean, this should only take me a second because most of the stuff is pretty easy to put away. We will go ahead and get started on our fifth and final pie. My kitchen is not clean yet because I decided to go ahead and reread this recipe for the French silk pie. 
and we need one of the components to cool. So I thought we should go ahead and get this going before we finish cleaning the kitchen. And that way I can clean the kitchen while all the goodies and everything are in the oven and chilling and all the different aspects that we need. And then <laughs> I went to the store this morning to get a couple of the ingredients I didn't have on hand and I need eight ounces of bittersweet chocolate. I assumed, I didn't look at the recipe and write down on my grocery list how much I needed. I assumed one bar would be enough. And as I look at this, this is only four ounces of bittersweet chocolate. So what I'm gonna do is break this into a bowl. And then I guess I'm gonna substitute with semi-sweet chocolate chips because I have an abundance of those. And I will weigh out, I've got a scale here. Let's see, where did I put it? Right here. I'll just weigh out four more ounces of chocolate and that should hopefully work. The only thing that I worry about is some chocolate chips have stabilizers in them. I don't know if the ones I have do. I bought them in bulk and I can't really look at the, well, I guess I could Google it, but we are where we are right now. <laughs> and so all my drawers are open. So we're just gonna go with it. Okay, tear that. Four ounces, that's perfect. I'm gonna pop this in the microwave and melt this just like, well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do that now. This recipe is probably the most complicated out of all of them. It still seems pretty easy, but I've had to reread this recipe a few times to make sure that I understand the steps that I'm working with. So I need to wash the stand mixer bowl too, because we need that as well. Okay, I think I understand now. So I got the KitchenAid and the KitchenAid whisk clean and dried. We also need to melt some butter. So we are gonna, we have a component we need to make on the stove and once that portion is ready, then we have to have all these different components come together. So I wanna make sure I have all my components ready for when all those different things are supposed to happen. So I need, 10 ounces, not 10 ounces, 10 tablespoons of butter melted to room temperature. So I've got my chocolate still in the microwave. I just microwaved it for 30 seconds and then I've let it just sit there. We're also going to melt 10 tablespoons of butter. I'm just gonna microwave this in the microwave as well. Our chocolate is melted. I gotta grab it out of the microwave. But I think our first pie is done. Look at that. That is our German chocolate pie. When I touch it, it feels cooked. Ooh, look at the bottom. It's nice and golden brown. So we're just gonna set this here and let this cool and grab our chocolate. Oh yeah, that's nice and melted. I did not burn it. So now we've got our two components. Now it's time to make the third component, which is the sugar mixture. We've got sugar in our pot and I've got some eggs here that are room temperature. And what we need to do is crack our eggs into our pot. We're actually gonna cook this so that we're not eating raw eggs. I need to turn the stove on. And we need to cook this until it reaches 160 degrees and we need to stir it the whole time. I think I'm gonna turn this really low because I don't want those eggs to scramble on me. I just read the recipe one more time to make sure I'm not missing something because I've never cooked just eggs and sugar in a saucepan on the stove before without it turning to scrambled eggs. So it's correct. This is all we're supposed to have in here. And I need to grab my thermometer.
So right now we're at 73.8 degrees. We're already at 115. So this is not going to take very long. Hundred and twenty-four. We're at one fifty-seven. One sixty. Okay, one sixty-two. Turning the heat off, and I'm going to take this off the heat. Now we're supposed to take our melted chocolate and add this to our egg and sugar mixture. We need to make one more component for this recipe because we're basically kind of making a mousse, I think. I've never actually made a mousse before. Oop, I just spilled that all over. So now we've got some heavy cream in here. I'm just gonna put a splash more because I spilled some. And just like before when we made the whipped cream, I'm gonna put the lid down and I'm gonna whip this once I plug it in until it becomes a nice thick peak. To our whipped cream, we're gonna add four tablespoons or four teaspoons of powdered sugar. And I forgot to add the vanilla to the chocolate mixture, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add it in here. We're gonna fold all this together, so I don't think that's gonna matter that I put it in the whipped cream instead of the chocolate mixture. So I'm just gonna stir that in. We've already whipped this to our peaks. Once I get this whipped cream out of this bowl, I'm gonna rinse it because we need to whip the butter next that we melted just a second ago. Now we have our melted butter. We're gonna add this back to our stand mixer that's now clean with the whisk attachment, and we're gonna whip this for two to three minutes. I'm not exactly sure what whipped butter is supposed to look like. There's not that much in the bottom of this to get actually whipped. So I'm gonna call that whipped. I've got my chocolate mixture here. I'm gonna turn this on and slowly pour this chocolate mixture into that butter. I think I need to scrape down the sides of this and then keep whip whisking it. I think our mousse mixture is whipped. It's been whipping for a good five minutes like it's said to. And that is our mousse. So now what we get to do is fold it into our whipped cream mixture. So just like we did with the last one, this is so silky and beautiful. It smells incredible in my house right now. You can smell the chocolate and all the warm spices from the different pumpkin recipes we're making. Okay. So I'm gonna mix this together until it's all one color. And I've got all the chocolate and all the whipped cream mixed together. This is gonna firm up quite a bit in the refrigerator because it has all that butter in it and all the chocolate that once this gets into the refrigerator, it's gonna set up beautifully, I think. I think it's gonna set up beautifully. I may have just tasted a little bit of this mousse mixture. Oh my goodness, it's so good. It's not too sweet. It's that perfect balance of 
chocolate and rich silkiness, but it's not too sweet at all. It is perfect. And I think it's fine that I use those chocolate chips. I think it's gonna be, this is barely gonna fit. Oh my goodness, okay. So we've got a little extra filling. I'm gonna go carefully put this in the outside fridge and I'm gonna pull out the other pie so we can decorate it. Our sweet potato pie is done. Let me show you when I jiggle it. It's a little jiggly, but not too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the oven and cooling right here. Oh my goodness, friend. <laughs> I completely forgot about the topping on this pie until just now. This one's done too. I think this is our apple pie slash pumpkin pie. The crust is nice and browned. And when I jiggle it, it's got a little jiggle but it will set as soon as it cools. So we're gonna get this out. I did have to put a piece of foil on both these pies for the last about 20 minutes. You can see how nice and golden our bottom crust is so that the crust on the top didn't get burnt and before it was completely set. So we can turn all the ovens off, which is awesome because it is kind of warm in my kitchen right now. I'm almost done cleaning the kitchen. I've been cleaning it for the last few minutes while the different things have been finishing cooking. I did pull out the chocolate pie and we're gonna go ahead and get that decorated. <laughs> I'm not gonna forget to decorate the chocolate pie or peanut butter pie because I forgot to put the streusel topping on the pumpkin pie because I started making the second pie and I just totally lost track of that. So no big deal, no big deal. So I've got some chocolate chips I'm melting here and then I've got some peanut butter that I've softened as well here. So this is done. My pie is really cold, which is good. So as soon as the peanut butter hits the cold pie, it's gonna harden. So the first thing I wanna do is take some chocolate and kinda just drizzle it on the top. I want this to kind of look a little rustic. That's perfect. And then we've got our melted peanut butter. And this is gonna go back in the fridge and this peanut butter is gonna set up and it's gonna get so chewy, I think, and delicious. Now I think on top of the peanut butter, I'm just gonna add a little more chocolate just so it looks like it's kind of layered on top of each other. And then we are going to finish this with one final thing. And that's some Reese's peanut butter cups. I could not find the mini ones, which is what this recipe called for. So I thought I would just take the regular ones and cut them in half and put them on the cake like this. You know what I should do? Is put them on the opposite sides so I know I can get this evenly spaced. Darn it, I shouldn't have done that one first. We'll just go right across. Burp. I'm having them all face the same way too. Look at that beauty. That was really easy too. Our French silk ca cake, <laughs> we are not making cakes today. Our French silk pie is ready for its whipped cream topping. So here are our beautiful five pies. This one here is our sweet potato brown butter. Then we have our French silk pie, which I should have put this pie in one of these deeper dishes, but I did not realize how big this was. So it's a little full, but once it's fully set, it's gonna be totally fine and absolutely delicious. I mean, look at that yummy crust. And then here is our delectable peanut butter pie with chocolate. 
our German chocolate pie, and then last but not least, our apple butter pumpkin pie with what should have spruce old topping on the top, but it's gonna be just as delicious without it. So tomorrow I'm going to drop those off at different family and friends' houses throughout town, and I just had a blast having fun in the kitchen with you, experimenting with some new pie recipes. These all turned out phenomenal. I'm so excited about them. They all have a little bit of this fun twist to you know, what we would have at maybe our traditional Thanksgiving table. So if you enjoyed any of these recipes or wanna try them yourself, I will link the recipes down below. You can find them down in the description box. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I really appreciate the fact that you spend time with me in the kitchen. I love hanging out with you and I don't think take that for granted, the fact that you take time out of your day to spend time with me in the kitchen. So these all turned out absolutely beautiful. I am so happy with them. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being you. If you wanna watch some of my other holiday cooking videos, I can pop those there. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.